What's up, guys and girls? This is uh, week three of the Casey Curry $50 week budget build. And today we're going to be using, or upgrading rather, the links on it. Now I chose to go with a set of white knuckle RC high clearance links, which don't, let me fool you, these aren't titanium, they're just polished aluminum links, but they are high clearance, so the lowers are bent, which are just like the ones on my Dodge. Now this, unlike the others, like level three, I had to kind of figure out how to do it. These came with instructions, which they recommend removing the axle, of course, but there's so much disassembly required. I got a head start on it and I removed all the stock hardware with the exception of the two bolts that, or well, the exception of the bolts that hold the back of the uh, side skids on because the new hardware they give you is just ridiculously long. And when I stuck it in there, it sticks, they'd be touching halfway across the chassis. And that's just not gonna float. So we're gonna do it my way, the way I know how to do it. And I can probably use the stock hardware to reattach the other ones. I don't, you don't have to use them. But either way, first things first, we're doing the upper links. It says, starting with the rear end, install the upper links first with new bolts up by the transmission plate. Install one three millimeter lock nut on each side. These will hold you new links away from the chassis, which should have been your, but it's okay. Now I'm gonna look at these screws here and see if they're any longer. If that screw is to go in there, that's no longer than the screw that I already have in there, so it's perfect. I've got one three millimeter lock nut already on I tried testing it first before I started filming because I didn't want to have any uh, Benny Hill moments. So now I'm attaching the second nylock to it. So that's one side. Let me get this damn thing off. Which is odd that they tell you to put two nylocks because that's that doesn't really look too secure to me. But it is an upper link. So that's one side done. I did, however, remove all the hardware at first then I, when I realized, um, no, I can use these stock bolts that came. I just gotta screw it back in. And to make it easier, I found as soon as you can get a nut started on there, do it. And then just run it all the way in. So now that's on there, and you pry your driver loose. You can attach your other upper link, which, interesting enough this time, that gave me almost no clearance, which is weird, because the other one gave me plenty. Well, that's definitely a game changer. How the hell are you supposed to tighten it when these other bolts, the only other bolts they give you are these gigantic suckers. And I mean, God, that sticks halfway out, halfway across the, uh... let's put two of them together. That goes way out. We flip over to the front. Stock axle truss, remove the truss mount, and play an old three mount. Install upper links. As we did in the rear, install the new bolts for the upper links, and install only one three mm lock nut. There's no more room for a lock nut on the motor side. Yes, the link will move, but not enough to notice on the rocks. Wrong. Why they would want you to put it outward is beyond me. I do not, I don't see the point in putting a lock nut on both sides. 
I don't know why you would need your links out anyways. Well, maybe because of the uh, high clearance, but Let's see if I can't get this other uh, other bolt in any further. It's a little strange when you have to go by somebody else's uh, way of doing stuff. When you're used to the ways you know work. I'm going to get the torque up on this a little bit. That's in there pretty damn good now. But I still... Nope, that gave me just enough threading to slide on a nylon. I can see the point of having them outside of the uh, frame rails. But after that, I don't really understand. But we'll do what they say, we'll tighten them down. Give me my driver. So I'll go ahead and I'll tighten the hell out of that one too. It is, so there's our new upper links. Now for the lowers. For the lower links. Slide your new links in place install. Really? You don't put locking anything in these. So I'm gonna try putting in a stock skid bolt, but they did include four longer ones. Maybe that makes some sort of a special difference. We'll try a, a stock one first though. Cause I don't see why you'd have to put longer, longer screws into your skid plate. You don't. You can run your factory skid plate bolts. So that one's busted. Let's get our other skid plate bolt started. And there ain't much to hold that into the skid. So there's our lowers and our uppers. And now it says we can attach the axle back to the chassis. So I'm gonna move our lower links out of the way first to do our uppers. Cause remember the uh, level three bracket puts them on an angle. Oh man, I've got the sniffle so bad. So what we're going to do is we're going to see just how much of a modification I have to do to this. Probably just loosen a rod in to get it to fit in on the angle needed, which was no big deal at all. Reinstall the bolts that you guys remember I had to source last time because I couldn't freaking find ones that would fit. So now we got to get this back in the hole back through and then of course our nylocks which is always a pain in the butt when they're upside down and luckily I've still got my big bit on the uh, power driver so if I can just get this damn nut to line up Give it a little zap. Okay, and then just a little, uh, there we 
go. So there's one lower link relocated. And then the same deal with this one here. We're going to just loosen the... Uh, loosen the link so it'll actually go in the way we want it to. If I can twist it hard enough. This is where you take a uh, driver and just use the driver's power. So now that I can get that where I want it. Getting it to line up is proving to be a little pain in the butt here. Okay, so I'd need to turn it the other way. It's got to go tighter. Like that. So now if I can get that link to go into there with a straight ball end. Come on, baby. There you go. Get that through there. Get our bolt started. Now this is obviously going to be a two part since I do have to still disassemble the front suspension. So, well the front axle and everything has to come off. So obviously I'll be cutting this video into two segments, but it will be all one big combined video. Now once I get this finicky little bastard to sit in there. Finally. Maybe I shouldn't have had all that Starbucks. Okay, now I've got my bolt sitting there. And you guys can't see any of this shit. Alright. Now, we're back to looking at the SM with our new relocated lower links. So now the next step is to go ahead and reinstall our factory shock and link mounts. So we know on an axial that the shock is the first position inside of the uh, mount bracket. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that threaded just enough just enough to get the shock on and through and then get it straight enough lined up to where I can take our new bent sorry about that we got our new link yeah, I'm sure I'll catch hell for that because I was a wife calling why didn't you answer the phone because I'm playing with my toys Okay, now that that's in there, I'm going to bust out the handy dandy driver again. And we're going to start running this back in. Get our M3 on there. This time I've got a bigger pair of pliers. Okay, that's one with the shock reattached. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and reattach the drive shaft too, because that was disconnected. After I get the uh, other lower link out of the way, I'm going to reattach our drive shaft, which, of course, we all know takes these one and a half millimeter pin throughs if you're rocking the pin through. I know a lot of us still run the uh, old schools. So drive shaft is reattached. And now we're gonna do the last bit here to get this done. We are going to screw in our other side and do the same process. Get the shock mounted on first and then our link to the inside. And I also, for ease of working on it with this, I uh, took the rear spare tire carrier off so the chassis would sit level while I 
did this. So now we just gotta spread this enough to get the new spacer in. Once the spacer's in, we get our nylock started. Sometimes it still amazes me that my gigantic meat claws can still uh, get into these tight spots and uh, tighten fasteners. So, there we go. There's the rear link now set up. Which, I'm noticing that it kind of took... Kind of took some flex out. Which is not a good thing. I had a loose bolt in my receiver, that's what I'm hearing. Yep. There's a screw still in my receiver, but if you notice, that new link kit kind of hampers the uh, dampening of the springs because the links are pretty much, they pretty much touch each other. I don't know if you can see it there or not. Oh no, let's see. Oh, that's still pretty decent articulation. So with that done, I'm going to at least pop the wheels back on the back so we can see. Uh, of course, I'm not using, I've got just a set of uh, temporary wheels because I don't want my good wheels going flat spotted from sitting or having the Jeep on its roof all the time. So I've got these old IMAX uh, Groundhogs as my uh, sitting wheels. So get the rear on. And there you have it. There's your rear rear four link kit on. Still has good flex. But the only thing that I would do I'm wondering if ah, see what happened here. <sighs> yep, I put the freaking links on backwards. The lower links are on backwards. They're supposed to be the bent ends up front. That's why they are touching each other. So there you go. There's the first half or first part. So we're actually gonna make this two parts since we've already ran in an 18 minute range. I had to disassemble it and redo it. Just the lower links. Dumbass should have read it first, but that's, how, that's the nature of the beast. So that'll do it for uh, part one of week three. And uh, we'll see you guys in uh, part two. What's going on everybody? This is the uh, little mini extended part two of build week three on the Casey Curry JK. If you remember last time I had my uh, rear links on and I didn't really like it. I thought I had them backwards. Turns out I didn't. So I had to go ahead and rechange those again. Went ahead and did my fronts. So now we've got it completely aluminum four length front and rear. Now when I said Back in the first video when I did the uh, level three racing shock truss in the back, I'd be reusing the stock four link for the front, which I did. However, I saved the time because you had to take the axle completely apart, take the servo off, the plate off. The stock four link truss is sitting on the front. I still need to run two self-tapping screws down in onto the axle, but it now, See if I can focus you guys down enough so you can see it. Uh, for reference, we're gonna use this Mountain Dew can here. Stock SDX10, not much flex. By doing the three link relocation, you guys, I'm probably gonna have to pick you up for this. So pardon the shaky video. Now you can see that this Jeep using Four link front and rear and the white knuckle RC four link kits, high clearance. 
now has a full Mountain Dew's can worth of flex. Which is very impressive considering it's all stock minus the links. Gears, shocks, all stock. So there you go guys, there's the uh, real quick addition to the uh, third week build. Um, body's sitting up there, still got more stuff to do to that. But yeah, there you guys go. There's the conversion from a four three link to a fully four linked SCX. So that will draw this week to a close. And we will see you guys next week for $50 budget build week four. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, like, and share. And we will catch you guys next time.